Oh, I'm John Lee Beatty, and I designed uh, the Nance for Lincoln Center Theater. I have a vague notion of how many Broadway shows I've done. I know it's over 100. I think it's about, at this point, about 104 or 5. It is kind of a remarkable number when you just look at it as a number. I, I, I'm surprised myself, actually. <laughs> The world of the Nance is mostly centered around 14th Street, uh, the theater district, but it's the, the days of the late depression and things are not going well in the theater. You know, burlesque, as I read about it, was fascinating to find it was the cheapest form of entertainment for a producer to put on. So these empty theaters, or challenged theaters we'll call them, actually put on burlesque more for financial reasons than artistic. And uh, the scenery even historically was borrowed or used or was left over from the show that didn't pick it up from the last gig. I've read certain people writing about the Nance that is based on Edward Hopper. And originally the first scene was that did describe a Hopper painting of the automat, which I know Hopper quite well. There ain't no picture out there of that first scene. So I had to invent it anyhow. But I actually was more reminded of Reginald Marsh and I brought in to one of the early meetings a book of Reginald Marsh and uh, oddly enough we took it and ran with it. This is my version of, uh, of an automat and this is really interesting historically. It's an automat down in the village that's frequented at certain hours and certain hours only by a gay clientele. When you get to the theater you don't realize it, but the actual doors of the automat are painted and they're slightly impressionistic. The audience doesn't know it because it's the first scene of the play. You can see this collage above, but actually in the wings, it turns around and in the wings, the stagehands pull this away. This is the set in um, Chauncey's uh, uh, apartment, which is in Hell's Kitchen. So he's living sort of like my, I, we, in rehearsal, we called it, kind of called it my sister Eileen. Um, in the theater district, but he's living down a half flight, sort of like on Restaurant Row, those half flights down. These signs here that look like street signs have actually been printed on velour and glued to the wall and then overpainted so that it can go away and soak into the shadows so that the actor comes forward. Because when you do a collage type of thing, you want, still want the actor to be the most important thing. Basically, the set is a revolve, and we change, we go quickly into a self-sufficient theater. This is an actual working theater. Uh, you could actually do a sh complete show in there. And this is a header, a painted header that, for the Irving Place Theater that was left behind, a mismatched drape that closes behind it, a mismatched backdrop, and a mismatched staircase, uh, sort of Hello Dolly staircase. This is actually covered in pink tin foil, and uh, this is uh, the general background for the stripper acts, basically. This is the notorious lamp post that loses its erection in the theater, and I've n I have to say I've never done an inflatable lamp post before in my entire life. My favorite part about working on this show, I think, was just sort of being able to add up so many things I've learned about New York theater history and just uh, put them all together. I think that for me the real joy of working on this was uh, Douglas Carter's Bean's vision of a of sort of this huge sort of fantasia of New York theater history, New York history, automat history, gay history, bathtub history, every kind of New York history as well as recreating the ambience on stage of these wonderful historical places.